This uh, project is a continuing activity of a large multidisciplinary project that uh, started at Stanford about five years ago, uh, sponsored by the Department of Energy's ARPA-E program, in which about 18 different projects, um, interdisciplinary in nature, were looking at various aspects of understanding uh, the way that uh, developing the new technologies that would be able to detect and provide information about energy use on the one hand, on the other hand, at the, and at the other end of the continuum, looking at consumers and how they can be reached and persuaded and in the middle developing a platform that would accommodate that. So June, I'm very happy to introduce you tonight to talk about um, energy segmentation. Thank you, Martha, and thank you, MediaX, for having me. Um, so the title of what I'm going to speak about is Energy Behavior Segmentation, a little bit different than the one that's on the um, agenda that you have. So the content's most the same. So I'd be remiss if I went too far without saying that the bulk of this line of research is the vision and analytic skill of Professor Ram Rajapogal in civil and environmental engineering. Uh, most of the work is done with, under his leadership and vision, with students and scholars in his sustainable systems lab, and he also has a smart grid lab. And um, I, we're trying to include, make that group more inclusive, so my background is communication. These are engineers, computer scientists, electrical engineering, uh, statistics, and environmental scientists. So what's the challenge? So the, much of this work is initially embedded within the context of utilities and energy service providers. So the challenge is to reduce greenhouse emissions. Policies are moving in that direction, public utilities commissions and so on. The next challenge is to increase the use of renewables such as wind and solar. They present particular challenges in their variability you don't collect much solar when the sun doesn't shine or when the wind doesn't blow. And then finally, just consumers across the nation are much more interested in improving and conserving the environment as well as in reducing their energy costs. So as some examples, California has a policy now that all utilities must reduce their greenhouse emissions to 1990 levels by 2020. The renewable problem comes up also in that there are certain days of a year, particularly in hot years, where there are eight to 10 times when peak use from AC or other things is so high that we need to use, if you would, dirtier energy. So we're trying to reduce the need to build these peak plants. And finally, just to note that uh, consumers and customers are interested in conserving the environment. So what's the opportunity? The opportunity is smart meters. These are meters that about 9 million customers in California, well, in the PG&E territory alone, where we mostly have data from, 23% uh, of households in the US have smart meters. That allows us to go beyond monthly aggregation of energy use, but collect it at a granular level, such as 15 minutes or hours. So we, we juxtapose this work to sort of more traditional segmentation work within utilities where questionnaires are used or focus groups where behavior is self-reported often at one point in time and where the data, if it is used and combined with these self-report measures, is usually monthly. We could also say that the samples are small, even at a thousand level, they're small to understand the true heterogeneity of, say, for instance, energy behavior profiles in five million customers. So we look at real behavior, that's your energy, actual energy consumption within a household. So it's not necessarily one individual, but it's within a household, maybe of multiple individuals. Uh, 15 minutes of hours aggregated to days or looked across individually with hours by days or weeks or seasons and so on. And we can look within patterns of use. So our goal, where are we at? So our initial goal is to describe the energy use patterns in a population, to think about how we can use those energy use patterns to target people to particular energy 
reduction or demand response programs and how eventually we can think about how to use these profiles to develop even more improved messages to communicate with customers like how to engage in their lifestyle to figure out their needs for energy reduction. So we look in particular at demand response programs, we look at time of use pricing and targeting for those or thinking about how to use those and in energy efficiency programs where utilities are often asking uh, consumers to either switch to more energy efficient appliances or and or to also use tips that are behaviors and habits that they can carry out over time that will reduce their energy consumption such as turn off lights, unplug devices, and so on. The data that we use then is from um, the PG&E territory, the largest utility in California. They're anonymized smart meter data. We have eight climate zones. We have 123,000, I think we have more now, but this work is based on that, 123,000 households with one year of hourly data, thus making up 45 million daily profiles. So what do we do with all this data? So first, after the massive cleansing process, we then began to build a load-shaped dictionary, that is a dictionary of all of the profiles, and developing strategies that we can compress those profiles into a set of shapes. We encode that data, then in, uh, extract features, I'll talk about features in a minute, and then segment populations according to those features, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So this just gives you an example of a couple of shapes. So the red line, the red line is the actual shape that we will encode, and that shows the range of variability around that shape that we would allow. So we can see that depending on the number of load shapes and the coverage, so at about, actually this shows 200, but it actually, 272 load shapes will account for over 90% of the population. The next thing we think about is features. So what are features of this energy data? So one is the load shape. That's the profile over a day. The next is the peak use. So this use in these very peak times, that's uh, usually four to seven or four to eight, depending on where you live. We can look at daily kilowatt use. We can look at build algorithms when we combine it with weather data to look at thermal sensitivity. Um, we can look at base loads. We can also look at my favorite feature, which I don't have listed here, we call entropy, and that is within a lifestyle, how many profiles do I have over a year? How many lifestyles, how many profiles can account for my actual energy use? So we can look at the top 16 profiles. So that just points out a couple of things here. This is the top 16 accounting for um, about, um, well, 50%, 50 profiles counts for 50%. So you can see at the top of each one what percent of the profiles that accounts for. So there are a couple of things to notice here. There are a number of these load shapes that are sort of double peaks. So they're peaking in the morning, flatter or lower in the day, and peak in the evening. So you can look at number four or number six or number seven are all peak shapes. But but notice a couple of other attributes. When they actually peak, so number six, for instance, peaks later in the day, maybe at 10 p.m., whereas number four peaks earlier, like at 8 p.m. So those are attributes we want to consider. So if we use definitions about when is a morning and when is a daytime and when is an evening and for, just to be efficient, I won't tell you what those are, but the, the peak times of these days and the dual peak. So we can see that evening peak, which is not the night peak. So evening peak is 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., the way we've categorized it here. So about 42 to 43 percent of the shapes account for 50 percent of the usage. The next thing we can do is to look at segmenting, ways to segment by the amount of energy that's used on a daily basis. So in the lowest level of consumers, you can see about six shapes account for, uh, they're 33% of the low users. Like these six shapes account for that. And you'll notice a couple of things that are interesting to me, at least about them. So they, they use a fair amount in the peak hours, but the peaks are shorter. 
and they use very little during the daytime. So you can think of a lifestyle where people are, you know, going to work, turning everything off during the day, or most things off during the day, and then coming home and using for a short period of time. When we look at high consumers, then we see sort of a different profile. For, for one thing, we see that these six shapes only account for 15% of the high consumers. So there's more variability in the high consumers. And you can also see they never get very low in their use. So they're, you can sort of see by the nature of their shape how they're using. So my favorite feature is entropy. That is, across a lifestyle, how variable is it? So you can see the plot of entropy, the, histo the histogram of entropy. The average entropy is about 5, 5.5, or 5.46. So you can see on that curve where entropy sits. So let's look at the low entropy users. <clears throat> so we can see that four shapes, so in the low entropy users, four shapes account for uh, about 80% of those lifestyles. And this group is about 20% of the population. So the interesting thing, so these, we might think of these as people who are very scheduled. They do very much the same thing every day. And these are, um, these are weekdays. But for low entropy users, weekends don't vary that much more. So, so we see a sort of standard wake up, get breakfast, whatever we do in the morning, we're returning on things, turning things off, then coming home. And there's some variability in that. But these shapes, these four shapes account for a lot of the population of the low entropy, that is, low variable users. Then the next thing we can do is to look at both entropy and use. Entropy, and low, moderate, and high, and kilowatt hour, daily kilowatt hour use. So let's take the low, high use, low uh, entropy users, 10% of the population. So when we look within that group at their load shapes, there are two load shapes that count for over 29% of their use that have a high peak in the evening. So these would be people who we know always will have energy, are always consuming energy in the afternoons or evenings at peak times. So they might be a prime audience for targeting for automated demand response. So for those who've agreed with their utility to um, have a, an a smart AC program, that is where the utility can rule their AC at certain times of the year. Because we know they will always have demand, and we know that demand is very stable as to where it is. So we can profile those customers and be much more efficient than a random sample of the population to recruit into these sorts of programs. The next part that we move to is even more complex. Where we, we've been talking about shapes. Now we're going to talk about lifestyles, where we cluster all these shapes, put them together in a lifestyle for a person. So I'll just give you a couple of um, examples here. So we yielded about 22 clusters, which um, but 90% of the population can be um, accounted for in seven lifestyles. 95% in 10, 100% in 22. So let's just take segment six, which I think is fairly interesting. So you can see each of those line accounts for the four top shapes that we would see in that lifestyle. So in that, uh, that group, so you can see 32% of that group in that cluster would use the black shape. 28% would use the red shape. 25% use the green shape, and 3% and use the blue shape. On the other hand, we can come and look at another segment. Actually, the shape is very different. But the four top lifestyles only account for, say, close to 50% of the number of profiles that you would see. And if we look even more closely at the seven top shapes, so you can take Group number one over here, where they're 41% of the entire population, their average kilowatt hour use is about 18.6, which is sort of on the actual average side. Uh, but you see how the top four shapes only account for, um, what, less than 20% of their actual profiles. So 
clusters still are portrayed by their features, by their level of use, and by their shape. So this is clustering according to shape and then looking at their variability within that. <clears throat> this is just another way of plotting all 22. I hate this graph, but anyway, so, so you can see, so number one, which is our largest one, you can see by the size of the circle, you can see where they live on the entropy and use curve. Whereas number six, which we talked about earlier, over there, still a moderate size group, but you can see where they live on the use and entropy curve. So we can plot all of the 22 lifestyles on the entropy and use. So finally, where do we go with this? So we're working with utilities, we're building new databases, we're bringing in actual other sort of more psychographic databases. We have databases that have those in large ways so we can look at other attributes of these shape lifestyles such as demographics or if there are any value or beliefs, other attributes that might help inform us about message design. In the process, uh, Professor Roger Pogel and his group have built a platform we call VISDOM, meaning Energy Visualization Insight System for Demand Operations and Management. It's a mouthful. Uh, so that can, in the PG&E territory where we have one large data set, we can profile and map. This can become a much more animated thing on the website. So we can map the average use by different zip codes across the state. Other things that we can do in this not great screenshot, but you get the idea. So we can choose an area. We can choose a feature that we want to look at. In this case, it's load shape, frequent load shapes by weekdays. Um, and we can see those can be plotted out for us so that we can see that. We can get a number of different attributes of those load shapes in that area. That is um, their peak, frequent, most frequent peak hour, and so on. So this interactive data set is a uh, platform, I think has lots of uses right now. It's most targeted uses for utilities operators. And then I think eventually program planners, uh, researchers and others will find uh, this kind of use of the data, this line of research and this accessibility and visualization of the data most useful.